By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back with more X-Points action for you. This is X-Points final 32. And in that final we have Felix with a, let's have a look, with a control list, a disrupting control deck. He wants to win with Millstone, which I think is quite nice. And uh, the rest is just your blue white control, but more about that in the deck deck section. He's taking on Lucas and Lucas is basically playing counter burn, but then he's playing with quite a lot of fat creatures for counter burn. He's playing Setch Troll, Darylor and Mahamotis in his list. So really strong decks here going uh, face to face. So it's going to be a really close finals, I think looking at the decks. Now, if you're wondering what is X-Points, X-Points is a way of playing Magic. Here you can see the X-Points list. They have a list uh, of cards with points allocated to them. And when you're building your deck, you cannot spend more than 10 points on, uh, on these cards. So when you're building, you kind of have to think about what cards do you want to put in your deck that have points on them. And again, you cannot go over the 10 point mark, hence the name X points, X of course being the Roman numeral uh, for 10. Now the cool thing about this is that if you think, hey, maybe this is something for me, you can just join their Facebook page. It's completely free and you can join these monthly events as well, completely for free. So if you think, hey, this is something for me, check out the uh, description of this video and there you will find a link to their Facebook page and you can find out how you can get in touch with this uh, community. Okay, now that you're you're uh, fully informed, I'm going to continue with the deck deck section of the video. I'm going to start with the, the deck of Felix disrupting control. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Felix disrupting control. Now, the first time I looked at this list, I thought, hey, this is just the deck, right? But then an X points version, which there's nothing wrong with a good control deck. But then he took another look and I thought, hey, wait a minute, how is he gonna actually win the game? And then I noticed the two Millstone. So Millstone is, I guess, key here, because that's kind of his win con. Millstone, a, a card from Antiquity is an artifact Two to cast, two and tap, mill the top two cards of target library into the graveyard, right? That's where the ter term milling comes from. So it's really cool. He's only playing with two millstones, so he's not going with the full four off. He's not playing copy artifacts and howling mines and stuff like that. So it's not a full millstone deck, but milling is definitely the way that he wants to win. After sideboarding, he could board in his one Sarah Angel, because maybe his opponent is going to board out all the creature removal, and then at one Sarah can be the road to victory as well. But I mean, looking at this list... I'm kind of, in a way, surprised that he's made it all the way to the finals. I mean, I'm not surprised because, I mean, it's got all the good cards, right? It's so good against creature-heavy decks because it wants to play against creature-heavy decks. You've got the Abyss, you've got, you know, Wrath of Gods, three of those, and a full playset of Swords to Plowshare. So, I mean, this deck really shines when it's under pressure from a lot of creatures because then it can kind of start killing everything, doing a lot of stuff. Um, but then still, his only win con are the millstones or I'm missing something. So it's it's really, I mean, Felix, you have to be a super patient player, right? To win it here and uh, well, make it all the way to the finals, I should say, because you haven't won it yet. I mean, you have to play the match still, but I mean, that is impressive, you know? Um, so yeah, this is the deck of Felix, super controlling. So what he wants to do is clear, right? He just wants to control the board. And I think in this matchup, it is not too bad for Felix because Felix has life gain with Ivory Towers. So, I mean, I think the direct damage doesn't really have to hurt him that much. And uh, he's got a lot of answers to creatures. And, of course, his opponent is playing with quite a lot of creatures. Talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Lucas. And uh, he's called it Con Troll. You know, like Con Troll. But then because there's got a lot of trolls, it's Con Space Troll. So that's kind of funny. Um, to me, it kind of looks like a counter burn list, right? But then instead of going with Flying Man and Surrender Perfrites, he's going with Trolls. Which is nice. Trolls are good as well. And of course, he's playing two beautiful Mahamotis. So he's got four set trolls, right? That's a 2-2 two, two creature that you can regenerate for one black. And if you've got a swamp in play, it gets plus one, plus one. So it becomes a 3-3. Three, three. So if you've got a Badlands, an Underground Sea, it also becomes a 3-3, three, three, which is quite nice. Then, of course, he's playing with... Well, of course, but he's also playing with Darylor. Darylor is one uh, black and three for a 4-4, four, four, which is great, right? Great value. But there is a catch... Once it's into play, all your other black spells cost an additional black to cast. So 
Daryl Lore is really this uh, throw that you want to splash, right? It's not a troll, it's a throw, by the way. And the, uh, it's this card you want to splash uh, in your decks. And it's, it's quite splashable because it's only one black, right? So it's easy. And it, it kind of comes with that package of Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. Now, because these cards have points on them, in this case, you only see Demonic Tutor being played in this deck, right? Because if you, if you also wanted to play Mind Twist, he would need to find space for that. He would need to kick out some other cards with points on them. And that's, of course, one of the nice things about X points that you have to make these choices. You cannot just auto-include all your powerful cards. You've got to think about it with that points list. Now, what I really like here is that he's also playing with two Mahamoti Jins. They're kind of there on the top end to finish the job. Um, now, I am a little bit worried in this matchup because, you know, his opponent has so many answers to these creature threats and there's not a lot of ways that, you know, Lucas can really ramp up. You know, you don't have a lot of Moxon in this format, meaning the opponent has more time to, for example, get to the four mana and, you know, play the Wrath of God that could be devastating for for uh, for Lucas here. He is, of course, playing with the Felwer Stones, which are kind of, you know, the, the next best thing to, to a Mox that you can play. I mean, you could do Felwer Stone turn two, and then you would have four mana turn three, potentially play out a Darylor or play out a Setch Troll with a Regeneration Mana open. So that could be quite nice. And then maybe have one one or two turns early your Mahamoti Jin that can work. He is, of course, also playing with quite a lot of burn. So if he can time that burn at the right moment and make sure that um, that he uses those shatters, for example, on the Ivory Tower so that Felix cannot gain too much life, then I do see a chance here for Lucas. Lucas is definitely the aggressor in this matchup. There's actually no aggression in the deck of his opponent. So, <laughs> I mean, they're only answers and milling, right? So, I mean, the job for Lucas is quite simple. Play out your threats as quickly as you can. Hope that they don't get destroyed straight away or try to counter them from being destroyed. And, uh, you know, try to get the victory as quickly as you can. Okay, um, we've looked at the deck of Felix. We've looked at the, uh, the deck of Lucas. That means we are ready. Let's go to the finals of X-Points. 32. Game number one. Here we go. X-Points final 32 with Lucas sitting on the right. So he's got his troll deck. It's blue, red, and black. So Setch Troll, Daralors uh, are in the deck. And of course, some power cards. He's starting with an island, passing the turn. Felix here with this Disrupting Control deck, which is mainly blue and white. Really kind of the deckish deck. And his win con are two millstones. And I think Felix is having a great opener here with that Ivory Tower because this is what he wants to do. His deck is super passive, right? He just wants to net life, control the board, and at the right time, start milling, winning the game. That's basically his plan. So he's fine with this Lucas dropping an underground sea passing the turn. So I'm just expecting Felix here to drop a land and pass. Ooh, he's going to do more than that. Okay, going to play a Felwer Stone as well. So that kind of, in a way, surprises me. Although maybe he's got a Gem de Tome in hand who kind of wants to ramp up to play the Tome and draw some cards with that. There we see a Hammerheim. So it's really up to Lucas here to try to uh, put some pressure on uh, Felix, kind of force him to take action. And here we see that Demonic Tutor by Lucas. So I'm expecting him to just here go for the Ancestral. Maybe he's going to surprise us, but, you know, he's got that one blue open. It's got to be very tempting to just go for the Ancestral here. So they're uh, dividing the deck. There we go. There's the Ancestral Recall. And you, you know what? It makes sense. Basically, Demonic Tutor in a lot of decks basically means uh, now I can Ancestral for three at Sorcery Speed, which is not too shabby, right? Three mana for three cards. That's not too bad. Passing the turn here back to Felix, so drawing for turn. And we can kind of see them, his life total going up. Not quite sure how that works with the dice, because I don't believe he's already on 27, but could be wrong. Anyway, passing the turn here. Lucas, of course, still being on 20. There's another island. Are we going to see a Daralore or a Setch Troll or another creature? It looks like Lucas is a little bit in the tank, perhaps thinking about it it is of course a little bit risky because you know that your opponent is having is playing with white also has that mock sapphire perhaps he he has a counter spell or you know maybe just a, an, an instant answer in the form of swords to plowshare so perhaps lucas wants to play out his creatures with counter backup and he's got that hammerheim for red mana of course separating the manas here there we go there's a set stroll so this is a 3-3 with regeneration and he can regenerate it because of the underground sea and what i like here is that lucas has the patience to wait you know he doesn't want to play it out without counter backup and now it's really felix to kind of answer the threat or maybe felix thinks you know what i'm pretty high up in life there's no need to do it now Ooh, there's a cop red wow i wasn't expecting that 
I thought it was in the sideboard. Well, we see it here on the board in game one. What is Lucas going to do? I mean, this is this is a big deal. I think if you're Lucas, you really want to try to counter this if you have counter magic in hand. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank here. So we're just waiting to see what Lucas is going to do. Taking a zip there off his, I think it's Coke first, and then try to decide. There's the counter spell. So he's going to counter away that COP red, and I think that's quite important. Or, oh, counter spell on the counter spell. So the COP is still on the table. And this is, of course, something that I'm sure Lucas was afraid of, but I do understand his, uh, his choice. I mean, what else can you do? So three points of damage here for Felix, the first damage it dealt in the game. But I mean, that COP is a problem, you know? Okay, there's a Chaos Orb, and now we can Orb, also because Felix is tapped out, so this is a great moment for Lucas. If he hits, and he does, COP Red out of there, and I'm actually quite happy, because, I mean, that would have made a huge dent here. I mean, it's hard enough for Lucas already without COP Red, I feel, because Felix had that turn one Ivory Tower. He's really doing what he wants to do. Oh, man, there's the Abyss. There's a Power Sink, though, so Lucas really finding the cards, fighting the battle here, and now he can swing in for three again. And there's an Icy Manipulator. That Icy is nice because you can kind of tap down at second blue every turn. So tapping down the Felwer Stone here. That means only three mana. And again, I'm not quite sure about that life total of Felix. I mean, does, it, does this mean that he's on 26? I don't really know. But I mean, look at that! Look at the cards in hand. There, Felix still has tons of cards in hand. Second Ivory Tower. He's got five cards in hand, meaning he's gonna gain two life. Of course, he's gonna lose three to the Sedge, but because he's gonna gain two, he's basically only losing one life. So let's just assume he's on twenty-three, right? Let's let's assume that. Then he's gonna go back up to twenty-five, I believe, next turn. I mean, Lucas needs to put some more pressure on. One damage a turn is not enough. Ooh, there's another icy. Full on control. And I mean, now he can tap down. What would you tap down here? Maybe a Plains and a Felwer Stone? So Felix going up here to 25. And now it's, of course, up to Lucas to decide. I mean, if he taps out, then he can no longer counter. That's the downside of it. Looks like he's only going to use one Icy. Exactly. If, if you use one, why not use both? Because as soon as you tap that, that blue mana, you know you can no longer counter. So you might as well just use both mana. I think this is a good decision by Felix here. There we see a Tundra hitting the board, so more mana for him. But it's not too bad for Lucas here. He can still attack. But remember, it's just one point of damage because of the double ivory tower. It's not really doing a lot. He really needs more creature power on the battlefield. But now, of course, Felix has two blue open with that Sapphire and the Tundra. So he has counter magic. And of course, he also has four swords to plowshares in the deck. He's got, you know, two Wrath of Gods. There's just so much firepower. He's got two Abyss. I mean, the last thing Felix is worried about is creatures. And what kind of worries me here is, is the relatively slow start of Lucas. When I was looking at his, at his list, I was hoping for a quicker start. But it's not meant to be. There's a pass, not even playing out any creature threats. Felix going back up to 24. And there we see Lucas here tapping down the Tundra. And what else is he going to tap down here? Perhaps the Felwer or the Sapphire. Doesn't really matter that much. Oh, we see a Shatter. On the Felwer Stone. So he's really trying to attack that mana base. I mean, he could have also shattered an Ivory Tower, but he understand this move by Lucas trying to keep Felix low on mana. Making sure he can only do one thing a turn at most. I mean, two, four, six cards in hand for Felix, right? He's going to gain four life. He's going to gain more life now than, than he's going to lose. There's a Bat Lance. I mean, Lucas really needs to put more creatures on the board. Attacking here for three. And then passing the turn. It looks like he's already tapping down the... Telling Felix what he's going to tap down with the Ices here. Tapping down the Tundra and the Sapphire. And, I mean, Felix up to 25. I mean, this is so tough here for Lucas. How can you battle this life gain engine? Attacking for two. Going to drop to 22, but he's going to gain more life next turn. 
believe he's going to gain four. Going to go up to 26, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly, going to go up to 26. Here we see Lucas tapping down some more lands. Going for the do duels, I guess. That makes sense. I mean, the only, the only like, line here for Lucas is, is just he, has, he needs another creature. He needs to put more pressure on the board. This is quite nice, actually, the City of Brass. It's another way to deal some damage here to Felix. I wonder if I would have actually played it out. Because every time that City gets tapped, you know, you take an extra point of damage. Not that it's really a big problem for Felix with the two towers, but still. And perhaps that's a reasoning of Felix as well. It's like, you know what, you can tap down my City of Brass, but it doesn't really matter that much. And here we'll probably see the tap of the city. And the tap of, yeah, you can do Underground Sea, you can do Tundra. It doesn't really matter that much. I guess you want to do Underground Sea so he doesn't have access to Black Mana. It looks like Felix wants to do something here in the upkeep. Yeah, going to go for a Disenchant. Going to take care of one of the Icy Manipulators. Is Lucas going to counter this? That's the question. I mean, this is going to be one of those long games. You know, you can see. See both players understandably so taking their time. Remember, this is a finals, of course. And uh, and both both players have pretty grindy decks, you know, although I think, you know, Felix has the ultimate grindy deck. But, you know, the way Lucas is playing his deck is also very more uh, more controlish style of play. And perhaps a after the first game, he realizes that, okay, wait a minute, my opponent is probably better at the control plan, so I should be more of the aggressor. Then, of course, you do need the right cards. It's not that you always can make that decision. So, uh, Lucas here really in the tag. Do I want to counter the disenchant? Yes or no? Ja or the nay? What are you going to do? So, he is, of course, going to use the IC. Going for the underground C. That makes sense. That would be my decision as well. And then he's going to lose the IC manipulator here. So choosing not to counter it, or perhaps he didn't have a counter spell at all in hand. He was just faking it. You know, that, that happens a lot as well, which I think is quite good. You know, pretend to have a counter spell and to really think hard about your decision, even though you have none in hand. You know, that can always have kind of a mental effect on your opponent. So here's the pass turn again. So I guess Felix can tap down the City of Brass, deal another point of damage. That's exactly what he does. So Felix is now on 26. I mean, the problem here for Lucas is Felix is not going down in life, right? He's just going up. I mean, quite slow, but he's still going up. He's going to tap two, three, four. What are we going to see for four? Oh, there's the abyss. It's back again. He does need to... Uh, okay, there we see a lightning bolt. I want to say, like, he does need to actually tap his underground sea for black mana. Here is not using any black mana. Because remember, the sea of brass was tapped by the icy. And let's see what else Lucas can do here. So losing us, of course, at Setch Troll to that Abyss. Ooh, look at this. So he's going to tap down the Tundra to make sure that Felix cannot counter. He's going to tap out completely. There's a Fireball. So now he's going for the aggressive plan. Again, it's really hard to kind of see the life total here of Felix, so we just have to guess. I think this was a Fireball of 8. Now he's going to gain life again. He should be somewhere around to 12 mark, or am I being too optimistic? So this is, this is just really tough for Lucas. You know, how can you, how can you play against this? I mean, he's taking one damage from the City of Brass, but that said, he's gaining so much more life with the double ivory tower. I... Don't really see a way out here for, for Lucas. There's a disenchant on the other IC. Are you going to protect this with counter magic? That's the question. Is he going to fork it, perhaps? Oh, he's going to fork it. I'm loving this. He's going to fork it. That is a cool move. And then we see a counter spell on the fork. So I wonder if Lucas has a counter spell here. I hope you have a counter spell, Lucas. Yeah, he's got a power sink. That is awesome. Oh, no. Oh, no. What are we going to see? Yeah, he's going to power sink. 
And it's going to resolve. The fork is going to resolve taking care of the abyss. Love seeing the fork here. It's still, in my opinion, kind of an underplayed card, especially since in old school there's so many strong instants and interrupts being used. And now Lucas is just going to pass, unfortunately. Like the, the ideal thing here would have been if Lucas could have slammed down another creature, also with Felix, of course, completely tapped out. But uh, yeah, just looking really bad here still for Lucas. Felix going back up in life, of course, with those ivory towers. So that fireball is kind of all done and dusted now. And there we see the millstone. So now we can start milling away. There's a counterspell, though. Countering the counterspell. So many counterspell wars. Both players really finding their counter magic here in the first game. A finals number 32. And look at this. Lucas just uh, passing the turn. There's an end step millstone activation. So losing a lightning bolt and a city of brass. That bolt is kind of a shame. On the other hand, it doesn't really matter with the towers. I mean, if you're Felix, all you really want to do is pass turn, right? Pass turn, keep all your answers in hand on end step, mill Lucas. And he's doing a really good job gaining life, milling Lucas, slowly going, grindy, grinding his way to victory, I should say. Okay, there's a Setch. That's something. I mean, I'm expecting swords and, and whatnot, but there we see the activation again. So Lucas, they're milling away some more uh, cards. A Setch draw and a land, I believe. Felix gaining some more life. Even if he would just let this troll be of Lucas, it doesn't really matter because he's he's got enough life. He's gaining enough life. I believe, is that is that land a maze? It's hard for me to see with the shade on it. Yeah, Lucas is saying, you know what? This is uh, the end of the road. You know, we could play on forever. You're gonna just gonna mill me to death. I really need to sideboard against his strategy. I think the good news for Lucas is that he's now seen the deck. He now knows what Felix wants to do. He knows that it's pretty much creatureless, that his deck is full of answers. He knows about the Abyss. So, I mean, now he can sideboard with this knowledge uh, in his mind. And we're going to uh, let these players board, give them some time, and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So one game up for Felix. And look at this. So Lucas chose to be on the draw, not on the play. Quite interesting. I think maybe part of his reasoning is that Felix is playing with Ivory Towers. So if Felix is on the play, he's like one card down and he's only going to gain two life from the tower instead of three. And of course, Lucas will have that extra card, which is quite nice for him. So there are a few reasons why you may want to choose to let your opponent start, but we don't see it that often. Uh, also interesting to note here is that Lucas started his turn with a Hammerheim. So that's a, a land from Legends that you can tap for one red. It can also take away a Landwalk ability. And that kind of surprises me as well, because you would expect him to start with at least a blue, uh, a land that could produce blue, blue mana, because, of course, he's playing with a lot of counter magic. In the meanwhile, a lot of things are happening, and at the same time, nothing is really happening. We see a shatter here on the Ivory Tower from Lucas, but also that COP red by Felix. That is really tough, and here's a mace. So Felix doing what Felix does best with his deck, kind of building a moat around him, making sure that uh, it's really difficult to touch him. There we see a Darylor, but the Darylor, of course, is not going to do much against uh, Felix here because of that mace here. There we go, another mace. Ah oh, man. <laughs> I mean, I get it. It's Lucas's plan. I respect it, Lucas, but it, it, it's really tough. You know, I, I love combat, and I, I guess we're not going to see it in this finals. There's a Felwer Stone in the pass. So this is really difficult now it's really up to Lucas to try to find answers to those mazes of if maybe like an IC. Of course, you've got Strip Mine and Chaos Orb. But only one of each, so you've got to really find those in your deck. It's just really tough here. I mean, the Darylord can attack, but he's just going to get maced. So this is difficult here for Lucas. Okay, we're going to see some action. So tapping two here. Another Shatter, so going to take care of the Felwer Stone. And this kind of makes sense if he has a follow-up play. Yes, he does. Okay, that makes sense because by taking out the Felwer and then you're going to go to combat, so that means that Felix doesn't have two blue open in his second main, so you can kind of play that Ancestral Recall without having to worry about a counter spell. Okay, this is a strip mine. At least it could take care of one of the mazes. The problem here is that it's like a double maze. There we see another City of Brass. If I was Felix, I would actually be tempted like not to play City of Brasses at all in his deck. Just because you're hurting yourself. Then again, of course, he's playing with so many different colors. You do need that color fixing. 
also in a format like X points where you kind of just play with all your mocks and then your uh, your lotus. You will see a Badlands hitting the board here for Lucas. I mean, this is so tough for him. He's already, you know, facing that brick wall. And that COP red is also a huge problem for him, right? Because burn can be a way to kind of kill your opponent out of nowhere if you've got a lot of lands. But the problem here is that COP red, at least Felix is not finding more ivory towers. That's something. Here we just see a pass, the turn. And I do get Lucas here. You don't want to use your strip mine unless you can do something with it. So just taking away a mace, it doesn't really do anything. So it's better to wait. So I agree here with Lucas for the choice. Maybe if you can find a second creature, then it's worth... Oh, Amnesia! That is so cool! I'm expecting a counterspell from Felix, but I'm loving this card. A card from the dark. Oh, look at that! Losing his entire hand! So with Amnesia, it's kind of the blue mind twist, but then with cooler artwork and just a lot more fun. Uh, but what you gotta do, you gotta discard your entire hand, except for the lands in hand. And here we can see Felix had no lands in hand, so this was a brutal moment. But now Lucas has to find a way to get rid of those mazes of if. I mean, if he can find an IC here, strip one of the mazes, step down another, that would be ideal. Tapping five or six here. There's Papa Moti. He's playing two Mahamotis main. So Mahamoti Jin. And I'm expecting him here to strip on end step. Okay, he's not stripping. That is surprising. I would so strip the maze. Exactly. Go do it. Go for it. Go and attack here. This is a lot of pressure, so it's going to send back the Modi. Take four. And I guess he's somewhere below 20 now. I mean, again, it's really hard for me to tell with those dice, but I don't think he gained a lot of life from the tower, so I'm going to guess he's on 18 at the moment. He's going to tap more. Oh, there's a Brain Geyser. Wow. Look at Lucas go. Taking control after that Amnesia. That was just a brutal card. For Felix, losing everything he had, now only one card in hand. This is not the kind of deck that Felix has where you want to only have one card in hand. That's not his plan. Oh, Icy Manipulator. He's going to tap down, taking nine. So I think he's around the nine mark. He's going to die. That's it. Wow. What a turnaround. I was kind of getting depressed. And Felix, I've got nothing against you, but I was like, oh, man, you've built yourself in. You're going to control the whole game. You're gonna you're gonna mill your way to victory again, and we're just gonna have to wait until Lucas says, you know what, you've got this, and you've got you you've won X points 32. But none of that. Lucas winning, amnesia being the big game changer, and of course that brain guys are after that. I'm I'm loving it. I love seeing cards like amnesia, uh, you know, play an important role. I've seen it before in other tournaments, but it's really nice to see it at a uh, at a finals table as well. Anyway, it is one one uno uno. Both players are going to uh, go back into their sideboards. We see them making some kind of minor tweaks and we will catch back up with you in the deciding game number three. Game number three, here we go. A 1-1, one, one. Felix starting with the Sapphire. What else are we gonna see? There's an Underground Sea and a Fower Stone. Wow, that's a rampity opening by Felix. So no Ivory Tower like we saw in game one and game two. Different strategy here. I wonder if he boarded in that one Sarah. That would be sweet. If he all of a sudden start casting the Sarah, like not next turn, but maybe to turn after, you know? <laughs> Lucas like, what? What is this? That would be funny. Anyway, Lucas here just playing a strip mine. Interesting and not using it. Interesting. Of course, the strip mine means that Felix cannot use the Felwer Stone here. So this Felwer Stone cannot be used because of the strip mine. I think that's something that Lucas is now mentioning. I've played with Tron in the past, and sometimes my opponent did the same thing with the Felwer. I'm like, well, I only got Artifact Mana, my friend. <laughs> so yeah, again, he's making the same mistake. This is funny. He's so really counting on that Felwer Stone Mana. So just playing out a second Felwer. There, I think we see the son of Lucas in the back, by the way. So yeah, that's it for Felix, just passing a turn. So I wonder if you're Lucas now. I mean, if you play a land, a colored land, all of a sudden you're giving Felix two mana. Do you really want to do that? On the other hand, I mean, you got to do something, right? So kind of held hostage here by his own strategy. You can see him think like, okay, what to do? I think you got to draw. You got to do it, Lucas. You got to play your game, man. At least, at least you slowed him down one turn. So there we see the island. There's the tundra. 
So now we can make blue. So we're probably going to see that millstone. Who's going to tap four? Okay, okay, there we're going to see the abyss. And he still has two mana left to play the millstone. But maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe he's worried about a potential power sink, for example. And of course, he wants to keep counter magic open. Yeah, this makes sense for the deck of uh, Felix. You've got to be patient when you're playing a deck like that. And I'm still trying to decipher Felix's life total dice, by the way. <laughs> like, so one is on four. So I guess the other two dice must be eight each. Because then you get 20. So I guess that's the way his, uh, his dice work. They're eight-sided dice. Okay, now I get it. In game number three, that's helpful. <laughs> okay, here we see an underground sea and a pass here by Lucas. So Lucas now has counter magic up. And of course, that abyss is not great for Lucas, but he can simply wait with playing out creatures until he can find an answer. There we see a millstone counter spell on the millstone. There's another millstone. So remember, I believe Felix is only playing two in total. So one in the game, one in the graveyard. He does play with the recall, I believe, and a regrowth. So he has some ways to get stuff back. He's not playing with Time Twister, I think. There we see an ancestral recall here by Lucas. On second thought, Lucas, maybe it's your daughter and not your son. Anyway, Lucas here drawing more cards. Tapping two. There we see Chaos Orb. Is he gonna flip? I think I think I would probably flip on the Abyss, right, in this case. So he's thinking, am I gonna do it now? And no, he's not. Probably wants to wait for the right moment. I mean, the thing is, when you're playing against these decks with blue and white, the first question is, is he gonna counter it? And then he doesn't counter it. Then your second question is, is he gonna disenchant it upon activation? You know, there's so many moments where they can kind of screw your plan. So it's really tough here for, for Lucas. So maybe he wants to activate it when he has counter magic as backup. Tapping two here, what are we going to see? There's a demonic tutor. Interesting. Already played out the ancestral. I really wonder what he's going to tutor for. I mean, maybe he doesn't even know. He did check his hand. What is he going to tutor for? I think it's so much more fun when someone tutors and the ancestral recalls in the graveyard because then all of a sudden it's a big mystery. Going through the motion. I mean, maybe... Does he play with recall? He could go for a recall to get a counter spell and a demonic tutor back, you know, trade some cards in hand, depending on what he has in hand, of course. Doesn't have enough mana to do that all right now, so he'll probably just pass the turn. But of course, there are other options. And we don't know what he sideboarded. Maybe he's got like a killer sideboard card that he's going to look up. Maybe it's another Amnesia. Maybe he's going to play Amnesia again next turn. That would be so funny. I'm still kind of impressed with that Amnesia play. Anyway, there we see a Millstone by Felix on end step. And now he's going to use the Chaos Orb. No Disenchant. Okay, so I think if you're Lucas, you're like, okay, no Disenchant. That's a good thing. And he is going to hit the Millstone. Oh, he's going to go for the Abyss. Of course he's going to go for the Abyss. Yeah. Sorry, it was just like Felix was using the Millstone, so I was really focused on that. And actually, Lucas losing the fork here. That's too bad. There's another mill for two. Ooh, there's a Setch going. That fork, that's a pity, man. Fork is such a, such a fun card. I loved how Lucas used that in, uh, in game one. There we see a Felwer Stone. So no pressure by Lucas passing the turn. I mean, if you're Felix, you're not too worried. I mean, you're on 20. You've got some cards in hand. You're milling your opponent. That's what you want to do. I mean, you're not dominant like you've maybe been in, in, in that first game. But it's not all that bad either. And you probably have some answers in hand for creatures there. So I think if you're Felix, you're quite relaxed right now. 
So Lucas here tapping six. Ah, there's a Brain Geyser. No counter magic by Felix. Again, a Brain Geyser by Lucas. Remember the impact of the Brain Geyser in game two. I mean, that card is a game decider, really. Discarding an island, meaning he's got seven cards in hand. That's huge. Going to tap three. Okay, there's a Disrupting Scepter with that full hand. That's quite nice. Counter magic here by Lucas. That's too bad. Disrupting Scepter, another card that I'm kind of, I like to see because you don't see it that often. Like it's, of course, it's, it's a horror, but it's a nasty card. It's a nasty control card, but it's one of those classic control cards that, that you just don't see that often anymore. But it was countered away. And, and Lucas here playing an underground sea. He's got a lot of lands. The question is, does he have some creatures? I mean, at a certain point in the game, he's got to start playing out some creatures. Okay, there's a Papa Modi. Talking about it, and it happens. Papa Modi hitting the board. Are we going to see a counter spell? No counter spell by Felix. He needs removal. He needs a mace. He needs a swords. He needs a raft. He needs an abyss. He needs something. Swords will do. It's such a good card. Counter magic. I guess you could expect that. And then the question is, does Felix have something else? No, he does not. And here you see the power of that Brain Geyser, right? That Brain Geyser draws you into those options. There's the attack for five. Ooh, five points of damage. Felix going down. Oh, flash fires from the sideboard. Whoa, man. That is serious stuff. Wow. Really nice to see a card like Flash Fires. That's nasty, Lucas. Felix here is milling Lucas away for two. And Lucas has to find an answer here. But now he lost his white sources to cast Wrath of God or Sword Supply Shares. Okay, now he's got it back in the form of the City of Brass. He's getting pretty low on life, right? He's got to be on like 10 or something. It's hard to, to follow with those two dice, but I think he's pretty low. I think he's below 10 already. I mean, Felix is in serious trouble. Needs to find a mace. Needs to find the swords. Needs to find something. Tapping four, tapping five. What are we going to see? There's a recall. Okay, so he's going to, of course, recall. Oh, power sing though. Oh, is this the end? Is this the end? This power sink is so important here. For a moment there, I thought Felix is going to get back the swords. There's a fireball. That's it. Wow. Lucas winning it here after that game one. To be honest, I thought Lucas was toast. So I apologize, Felix, if maybe I was rooting a little bit too much for Felix, uh, uh, for Lucas. But I really felt that Lucas was the underdog. But I guess he was not. Congratulations, Lucas, for winning it here. And of course, I mean, you do have a killer deck, right? I think Setch Troll and, um, and also Daryl Lore are some of the most popular creatures in the X-Points format. So it's no surprise. And yeah, you just... Uh, you did, a, you did a great job, uh, especially in that, in that game two where you kind of turned things around where I really thought Felix was in, in full control, but then you had that amnesia that was backbreaking for Felix. And then that Brain Geyser as a follow-up, wow, you know, and from there you took over the game and eventually you took over the match. So congratulations here to, uh, to Lucas for winning X-Points number 32. And that was the episode for today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave a like, a comment, and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then, of course, you can also become a patron of the show. So if you really like, like the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron and support the show. Check out patreon.com slash Talks for all the ins and outs. And one of the cool perks is your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Somebody can see.